Hello students, this is Professor Chalai, and in this video we're going to look at the Bohr model. As always, you can follow along with our Chapter 6 workbook. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe the Bohr model of the atom, and also use the Rydberg equation to calculate the energies of light emitted from, from an atom. Now, so far we've talked about how uh, light can be described as a wave, or as a particle called a photon. For a long period, uh, we thought that electrons were just a particle, you know, a tiny, tiny, tiny ball uh, that has a negative charge that circles around the atom like planets in the solar system. And that seemed to work fine, but then there are a few things that we observed that didn't jive with this um, description of an electron. For example, one of the things that we observe is if we take an element and heat it, uh, add energy to it in some way, and then let that element glow, and then we check the light from that glowing element, we find that it doesn't have all of the colors of the rainbow that you would expect from a continuous spectrum, but rather they would have very specific colors. That's why neon light, for example, always has very specific colors. Um, here are some examples of those. Here are the light emitted from a sodium, uh, sodium element um, versus hydrogen versus calcium versus mercury. They're all very, very specific colors, regardless of, um, you know, when you do the experiment. And so these colors start to act as like fingerprints for these elements. But then the question becomes, if the electron is like uh, planets circling the solar system, like circling the nucleus of the atom, why do we get very specific, um, very specific colors? Because the Earth goes around the sun, yes. But the Earth can go closer to the Sun or farther from the way from the Sun. In fact, it does that um, a lot. So why can't the electrons, if it goes closer to the Sun or farther away from the Sun, the nucleus, not the Sun, the electron goes around the nucleus, why does it emit any color of light? Why does it emit very specific colors of light? Well then, Bohr decide, well, yes, the electron goes around the nucleus, but maybe it can't take up, it can't go in any, sp any and all positions around the nucleus, but rather it can only circle around very specific orbits, and it can't really change anywhere in between those orbits. And so he labeled these orbits, uh, n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, and electrons could only be in n equals 1, or n equals 2, or n equals 3, but it can't be somewhere in between, right? And this is his idea of, to explain those specific lines. And so if an electron moves from a higher energy down to a lower energy, there's a very specific, let's say, distance there. And that very specific distance corresponds to, let's say, a large amount of energy. And that's why we see violet light in hydrogen, for example. But if it goes down from the 4 uh, level to the 2 level, that's a very specific energy. And so we see a very specific other color. But because there's no electron, let's say, somewhere between 4 and 5, to go down, there is no color to observe between those two. And so this idea that electrons could only be in these specific orbits um, give, uh, was an explanation for why we see those very specific lines, but not lines in between or not any and all the colors. So this is the Bohr model of the atom. We have atoms circling the nucleus like planets around the solar system, but they're stuck in very specific orbitals or orbits, and they can't go anywhere between, but they can jump from one orbit to another. And so the, the equation to figure out how much energy um, that an electron is when it has one of those specific orbits is here. So n is just labeling the orbit orbits, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, up to infinity. Uh, r here is just some constant, and we'll talk about that constant in just a second. And z squared, z squared, z squared, um, Z is just the charge of the nucleus, right? So it's the number of protons. That is the number of protons. So if you're dealing with a hydrogen atom, that is one, helium, that is two, and so on and so forth. So uh, Z is nuclear charge. And N we talked about as just being one of those orbits. So really, we're not really um, we're not ever really interested in exactly what the energy of the electron is. We're interested in differences of electrons, because uh, when electrons jump from one orbit to another, it, it's either absorbing light to gain energy or releasing light to lose energy. Because as we learned from our previous chapter, 
energy must come from somewhere. So if it drops down in energy, that energy is released as a light, as a photon. If it goes up in energy, then that energy must have come from some light that it observed. So the difference in energy will be equal to that some constant times uh, z squared. And then here, nf, there we go, nf is the final, final orbit. Whereas Ni, that's the initial orbit. Initial means it's where it started. Final means it's where it's ended up. And they're going to be whole numbers, right? One, two, three, four, five, and so on. Now, this is what we use to calculate the energy difference of the photon that leaves the uh, atom to figure out what the colors of the light would be um, when when atoms emit light. Okay, for hydrogen specifically, this constant R is this Rydberg constant for hydrogen. So we put a little H there to show that it's for hydrogen. And for I, hydrogen, we can ignore the Z because Z is one, so Z squared is just one, so this all just goes to one if we're looking at hydrogen. So for hydrogen, we have this constant, and basically it just shows um, this constant times this factor in parentheses um, gives us the a means to calculate the energy of light that's emitted when we heat up uh, hydrogen. Okay, let's use that in some calculations by looking at 8a. So in 8a, we're looking at an electron that jumps from n equals 4 to n equals 6. So if, we, if I were to draw this orbit, um, this is n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, five, oh, it's getting really big, six. So n equals four, this is n equals six, an electron starts here, it jumps up over here. So this will be the initial, the initial will be four, and the final orbit will be six, right? Because it jumps from four to six. So let's calculate the energy change there for that uh, transition. So we just set up our Rydberg equation, the energy change will be the Rydberg constant for hydrogen times, I'm ignoring Z because Z is just one and this is hy for hydrogen, one over the final level squared minus one over the initial level squared. So the Rydberg constant is 2.1799 by 10 to the minus nine, what is it, 10 to the minus 18 joules, 18 joules, the final level, we. Uh, said was 6, so that'll be 6 squared. The initial level we said was 4, so that'll be 4 squared. When you're punching these in your calculator, add parentheses over these fractions because sometimes some candle, uh, calculators can't handle that sort of expression. All right, so we punch all of these into our calculator and we'll get a negative number, um, weirdly enough, of like set minus 7.57 times 10 to the minus 20 joules. Now, we can ignore the negative number here. All that means is instead of a photon being emitted, instead of a photon being released, a photon is actually being absorbed. And that makes sense because it goes from a low energy, n equals 4, to a high energy, n equals 6, right? So you need to absorb energy to go from low to high energy. So this here is the energy difference there. Uh, try the rest, b, c, b and c, on your own and um, see if you can figure out the energy calculator um, calculation for uh, these transitions for hydrogen, n equals three to n equals five. When you're done, uh, done, you can unpause the video and I'll at least go over one more with you. Okay, let's look at B. Again, the energy change is gonna be the Rydberg constant times the final level squared minus the initial level squared. The final level is five, so that's an F. The initial level is three because it's going from three to five. So let's, uh, let's punch in these numbers. We have 2.1799 by 10 to the minus 18 joules for the right word constant. The final level was five, so one over five squared minus one over initial level is three, so that's three squared. Punch all of these into our calculator and I get 2.04, well really negative 2.04 by 10 to the minus 18 joules um, but since 
the, uh, we don't really care about the sign. The negative just means that um, energy, a photon was absorbed, not emitted. Okay. Uh, do number eight, uh, 8C on your own, and then we'll go on to the next question. Okay. In this question, number nine, it asked us to do the same thing for hydrogen, right? Calculate the different transitions. Uh, but in this case, they want you to indicate whether these emissions are in the UV region, right? So like one nanometer to about 400 nanometers is UV. Visible is between like 400 and 750 nanometers or infrared is between 750 to around 25,000 nanometers. So first, we need to find the energies like we did here for those uh, photons. And then we need to convert the energy of that photon to um, a wavelength in nanometers using Planck's constant and the equi uh, energy of a photon equation. So try to see if you can do these, um, all of these on your own. You can unpause your video if you can't figure out how to do one, and I'll do one as an example first for you. Okay, so I mentioned how the first step is to actually calculate the energy of the photon. So let's use the Rydberg equation to do that. The energy is the Rydberg constant times one over the final level, which is n equals one, so that's one squared. The initial level is n equals 4, so that's 1 over 4 squared. And if you plug this into your calculator, uh, Rydberg constant is, of course, 2.1799 by 10 to the minus 18 joules. I get something like, uh, let's see here, minus 1.5, nope. I get 2.04 by 10 to the minus 18 joules. I misspoke over here. This answer should actually be, uh, let's see, 1.55 by 10 to the minus 19 joules. I do all of these calculations before I tape my video uh, videos. I just looked at the wrong number there. I do it that way so that I don't have to like punch numbers into a calculator while I'm recording. OK, so this is the energy of the photon that is emitted. Right? You'll notice that this time it came out to be a positive number, and that's because we're going from a high energy to a low energy, and so we release the excess energy in terms of one light particle called a photon. And we now know, we know that a photon energy, right? the energy of a photon is equal to h times c over lambda. We know the energy of this photon, we know h, it's always a constant. We know c, it's a constant, unless they tell us a different value for c. And we're trying to find a wavelength. So let's rewrite this equation to solve for the wavelength. OK, let's erase some of this to rewrite this equation to solve for a wavelength. I will multiply both sides by lambda. So lambda cancels out on that side. And then I'll divide both sides by e. So E cancels out on that side. And so what this ends up giving us is an equation to solve for the wavelength, where we have the wavelength is equal to H times C divided by the energy E. So let's use that. The wavelength should be H, which is 6.626 .6 by 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds. It's one of those numbers that um, you don't necessarily have to memorize, but it would be easier for, to solve problems if you did. Speed of light, again, 3.00 by 10 to the 8 meters per second. You, again, don't necessarily have to memorize it, but it'll make calculations easier if you do. Seconds will cancel the seconds. And then the energy that we just calculated for this photon was 2.04 by 10 to the minus 18 joules. So joules cancel out. And we have an answer of wavelength in meters, which is great. But in order to figure out what region of the spectrum it is in, we need to convert that to nanometers. So let's do that. We know that one nanometer is 10 to the minus 9 meters. So we plug all of these into our calculator. And let me see if I can read the correct number. We should get 97.4 nanometers. So this is 97.4 nanometers, which means it's part of the UV region of the spectrum. It's below, seven, uh, below 400 nanometers. All right, so pause the video, do the others that end, do B and C. And then on pause, and we'll go over the, the well, I'll mention something. Okay, so if you've done B and C, I'm not going to do them for you. Um, here's an example how to do them if you're not sure. But for each of these, you'll find that they're in the UV region, 
right? In fact, all of the ones where the final level is one, you'll find that they are in the UV region. And because of that, we call this the Lyman series of lines. You don't see them with your naked eyes. You need special instruments to see them. But every transmission where it goes from some high level to the final level is n equals 1 for hydrogen, uh, it's going to be in a UV region, and it's going to be part of the Lyman series. All right, let's try D. n equals 5 to n equals 2. If you haven't done so already, please do so now. Pause the video, and then when you unpause, we'll go over it together. Okay, so the delta E here is going to be the Rydberg constant times the final level is 2, so 2 squared, minus 1 over the initial level is 5, so 5 squared. If I punch all of these into my calculator, which I assume we know how to do now, we should get 5, nope, not 5, 4. 0.58 by 10 to the minus 19 joules. Remember earlier I said if you have something like 10 to the minus 19 joules, this is around where visible light is. So before even convert it to nanometers, we should have an we have an idea that this should already be visible. But let's just verify. I'm going to use this equation up here that I derived for the wavelength. Right? So the wavelength is equal to h times c over e. h is 6.626 by 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds. Speed of light is 3.00 by 10 to the 8 meters per second. So those cancel. Uh, energy we just calculated as 4.58 by 10 to the minus 19 joules. So joules cancel, we have meters, but let's convert this to nanometers because that will make our life easier to compare it, to figure out what region of the spectrum it is. I plug all of these into a calculator and I get 433 nanometers, which is visible because the visible as we just talked about was between 400 to 750 nanometers in fact if you do uh, e and f as well you'll find that so these are all where the final level is 2 right the final level is n equals 2 you'll find that all of these are in the visible region and so whenever you look at the emission spectrum of hydrogen so where is that up here this one, the emission spectrum of hydrogen, these are all what we call the Balmer series of lines. Those lines are all visible with the naked eye and we call them the Balmer series. So when n, the final level is one, we have the Lyman series. When the final level is two, we have the Balmer series that's in the visible region. Lyman is in the UV region. And then if the final le uh, level is three, we call this the Passion series and this will be in the IR region. You can't see them with the, your naked eyes. Uh, with final level equal 4 and 5 and 6, they also have other names but we're not going to talk about those um, in this video. Okay, so this uh, is our Bohr model of the atom. It's, it was designed to explain these emission spectrum and we to do that, Balmer not Balmer, Bohr, came up with this sort of solar system model, but the electrons are fixed in these orbits and can't really go in between them. And that sort of explained these um, lines very well uh, using the Rydberg equation. We can uh, calculate the energies of those and the colors of those lines with very high accuracy, actually. Um, but as we'll, we'll learn, it's not really a good enough model of, of the electron. The real uh, sort of the proper model of the electron is what we call uh, the quantum mechanical method, where we describe the motion of the electrons as waves. And so we'll get to that in the very next video. I'll see you then. Bye.